the resistivity rises. So as the T rises, resistivity rises, that means conductivity does what? As uh, T rises, the conductivity uh, goes down if resistivity increases. So let's see if that makes sense on the electrical, uh, in the electrical case. As the heat is going up, the molecules are moving faster. And now you put a potential difference across this uh, wire, OK? And you want, elect uh, uh, you want the uh, electrons to flow through this wire. So mo the molecules of the wire are bouncing up and down, up and down. So here is the wire. So you want the molecules to go through, and then, and then uh, here are the molecules jumping up and down, bumping into each other. And then you put a battery across the wire, and uh, now the current is going to flow. When I say current is flowing, remember what that means is electrons are flowing the other direction. So electrons are flowing this way. Okay, and then they're supposed to be, the electrons are supposed to move through. So the electrons are supposed to move through this uh, wire. Okay, so that when I say current is flowing that way, I mean electrons are flowing this way. So is it easier for the electrons to move? when the molecules of the wire are going faster or easier, uh, or is it harder? Okay, think about you trying to walk through a group of people, and the people are dancing, you know, they're bouncing back and up and down, and, you're, and they bump you from every direction, right? You can hardly get to one, from one end of the room to the other, right? If you go to like a bar or something, like a nightclub, go through it, you cannot never get through that, right? So it's the resistivity should increase as the temperature goes up, and so it should be a poorer conductor as the temperature goes up. You see? So on the electrical case, it makes sense. In a thermal case, if the molecules are moving faster, then they can propagate the heat uh, better. So in the, uh, in the heat case, in the thermal case, the conductivity should rise as the temperature goes up. So it's a little different. As the temperature goes up, the thermal conductivity should rise. But as the temperature goes up, the, uh, the electrical conductivity should go down. OK? OK, so that makes sense. So now let's talk about the, what are the alphas of the different materials. So go back to this table now and write down alpha. OK, so alpha for silver, 3.8 times 10 to the minus 3. Oh, by the way, what are the units of alpha then in order to make it work out? Well, alpha is here. Uh, the units of alpha got to be 1 over Celsius, right? If this is Celsius, this is 1 over Celsius. That will cancel that, and this will be unitless. And then the units of rho will be whatever the units of rho zero are. So it's got to be 1 over Celsius is the units of alpha. OK, so silver 3.8 times 7 minus 3. Then the other ones are 3.9, 3.4, 3.9, 4.5, iron 5.0, platinum 3.92, 3.9. So this is also 3.9, the, the lead. Hold on, this one, the lead one was this one. Over there, I didn't notice any kind of pattern necessarily. So silver was the least, uh, the, the least resistivity. The, and um, it's, Co temperature coefficient was not the least. There was a gold, which was 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3. 
So the least uh, resistivity is not necessarily the least uh, temperature coefficient. Um, lead is not necessarily the largest temperature coefficient because uh, iron is greater than lead. Okay, so you see, there's no relationship like the biggest row has to have the biggest alpha, or the smallest row has to have the smallest alpha. Okay, when you get to nichrome, what do we see? 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3. So nichrome's temperature coefficient is smaller than the metals by a factor of what? A, roughly about 10 to the minus 3. Okay, there's a kind of a weird thing. Uh, in terms of magnitude, it's about roughly the same as nichrome, but it's negative, meaning for carbon, as a matter of fact, not just carbon, but the next uh, element they give you is germanium, next one they give you is silicon. So germ a carbon, germanium, and silicon. They all have negative alpha. And not only that, for uh, silicon, the alpha is negative 75 times 10 to the minus 3. Negative 75 times 10 to the minus 3 for silicon. Now, what does that mean? Not only is it negative, but it responds really well to temperature change. It's even bigger than any of the metals. That means if you heat silicon, its resistivity will go down. And if you heat it by 20 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees, if you keep heating it, it's going to respond really well to what you're doing, and its resistivity is going to go down. It's going to become a much better uh, resistor. Okay? Now, why do these three have this property? Carbon, uh, germanium, silicon is because they are semiconductors. It has to do with where they are on the periodic table and their uh, properties, their chemical properties, and how do semiconductors... There's a way that they, their uh, el electrons are arranged in the orbits. Okay. Okay, so, and then the glass and the other ones, they don't even give you any alpha. They probably don't respond very much to temperature change. Okay, so now we talked quite a length at resistivity and alpha. Now let's go back to the original equation. And let's see what this equation is saying. This equation is saying the resistance of a material is proportional to resistivity, which would make sense. The bigger the rho, the bigger the r. But it's also proportional to the length and the area. That means the longer the wire is, so if I have a wire that's uh, twice as long as this one, right? Twice as long, it's going to give me a resistance that's twice as large. Now, does that make sense? Again, so I want to see each portion of an equation and make sense out of it. That makes sense, right? Think about it this way. If you take a hose, like a water hose, you hook it up to your uh, water line and you turn on the water, if the hose is longer, it's going to take a longer amount of time before the water gets out, right? And you're not, you know, you're not going to have as much quick water flow. So that's kind of what I compare it to. And then the area, the, so the bigger the L, the bigger the R, the smaller the A, the bigger the R. So if I have another wire, that's smaller, then the R is bigger. Does that make sense? So if the, if the hose is thinner, less water is going to be able to fit through than if the hose is bigger, right? So that's the same idea. Now, if I cut the diameter, uh, let's say this has a diameter that is a quarter of that. Quarter, the diameter of this resistor is quarter of the diameter of that resistor. For the diameter, the area is 1 16th, right? 1 16th, uh, so the resistance goes up by a factor of 16. From, uh, from here to here, this one is a 16 times bigger resistor. And then this one is double the resistance of that. 
See?